Good morning everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed day. Mine's going really good. I'm out here in the garage today. We've got the frankincense going. It smells really nice out here. And uh, I've just been doing a little bit of piddling, so I thought I'd do a quick video. So listen, I see in the comments that, that a lot of people, you know, they're, they're starting to get a little bit down. They're starting to get a little bit bummed out because life is getting hard. I mean, a lot of people have lost their jobs and life is tough it's, and it's getting harder and harder and harder and the demonic host is filling your head with all kinds of doubts the demonic host wants to get you into a state of self-pity and people I, I fight this constantly and God has blessed me immensely but still the demonic host is always in your head trying to fill you with self-pity and when that happens, what I do and what you need to do is to ponder the promises of God. That's what they're there for. They give us hope. And I wanted to go over a couple of those promises with you today. 2 Peter 1, 3-4, this is what he says. According as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. The first promise that I want to go over is found in 1 John 1, 9, and we all know it. It says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. People, that means that anybody with a pure heart that says, Heavenly Father, would you please forgive me every sin that I've ever committed? It's called repentance. And if you do that, you're forgiven, you're as white as snow. So listen, <laughs> there's two video games that I've won. All right, from start to finish, I beat the entire game. And one of them was in, I was in Desert Storm. Uh, I had a Mario Brothers. And I went with that thing all the way from front to beginning. And during the war, I went all the way through that. There wasn't nothing else to, else to do. And I completely beat that game all the way. And another one was, is after I retired from the military, uh, I forget what one it was, it was that black box, but I got Jurassic Park. And Jurassic Park was a cool game. But uh, it was a hard one. So every day, I lived five doors down from the school when I'd get stuck somewhere. Every day when the kids would be walking home from school, I'd walk out of my driveway down to the sidewalk and I'd tell the kids, I'd say, hey, any of you have Jurassic Park? And there'd be some little third grader that said, yeah, I got it. And I'd say, well, look, when you're stuck right here, what do you do? And the kid would tell me what to do. And I did that two or three times a week and got all the way through that game and managed to beat it with the help of these little five-year-olds. <laughs> but anyway, listen, th this is why I'm telling you that. You know when you're playing any game and all your men are dead, you lose all three men, you're completely wiped out, it doesn't matter. All you got to do is hit that reset button and you get three new men and you go on. People, that's what God's forgiveness is. No matter how bad you've blown it, no matter what you've done, no matter how filthy you are, all you got to do with a pure heart is ask God for forgiveness and it's a done deal. Your sins are forgiven you as far as the east is from the west. That's a promise that you can count on. Psalms 103, verse 2 to 6. I love this psalm because in this psalm we get five promises. And this is what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all thy iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. People, listen. Those five promises right there 
Number one, we just talked about it. God forgives you every sin you've ever committed. Forgiveness is there for the taking. Number two, He heals you. God will heal you. And a lot of times, a lot of my ailments that come on me, I brought on myself. But the Lord still healed me. Number three, it says, He redeems your life from destruction. People, I don't know about you. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's starting to rain. He redeems your life from destruction. People, I've told you this many times. I am my own worst enemies. Some of the worst things that ever befell me, I brought all on myself. I'm my worst enemy. I freely admit it, and God knows it. So many times I've had to go to God and say, Lord, look, I know I brought this on myself. I did it. I'm totally guilty. But Lord, would you please forgive me, Lord, and help me to get through these consequences and help me to move on? And He does every time. That's a promise. No matter how bad you screw up, God will turn it around and set you down the straight path once again. He redeems your life from destruction. That's a promise you can count on. The next one is, He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. People, listen. Listen to that. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. You know what that means? God's not mad at you. People, God's not mad at you. God's not sitting there coming up with a plan on how He can wipe you out. If God wanted to wipe you out, He'd just take His thumb and squash you like a bug. But that's not what God's thinking. God has good plans for you. Plans for eternity. God loves you more than you will ever know. And He has good plans for you. He doesn't have plans to harm you in any way. That's all demonic forces putting those thoughts in your head when you think God's out to get me. That is a promise you can count on. Loving kindness and tender mercies. And the next one it says, He satisfies your mouth with good things. People remember this. No matter how bad it gets, and it's going to get bad, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. He will feed you. He will get you through the hard times. He will always meet your needs. People, you need to cling to the promises of God because God cannot lie and every word in that Bible is absolute truth. Last one is Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And it's, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. People, a yoke is something you put on, a, on an oxen or a horse or whatever, and it's to allow them to do work. That's what the yoke is. And it's normally hard work. But Jesus said you put His yoke on you, and it's easy. What He asked you to do is easy. People, listen. The yoke is the Word of God. The yoke is the Word of God. And all the promises of God that apply to you. That's the yoke the Lord wants to put on you. His Word, all His promises. It simply means to claim the promises and apply them to your life. And Anything that you have to worry about, anything that has anxiety in your life, people, that's a yoke that you can, you can transfer that right over to Jesus. You can say, Lord, would you please help me with this? Lord, would you please take this and handle it? It's, it's beyond me. I've tried. Lord, I've tried to fix this. I can't do it. People, that's the yoke. Listen, when things get bad, and they're going to get bad, always remember, God will take care of you. He promised He would take care of you. And His words are absolutely true. 
Anyhow, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell you choose, just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.